this sure takes me back, boys, you know. Mm. Takes me back to a different time, a simpler time. It's Wednesday, you know what that means, you know, a great episode in the books and us just being like, fuck it, let's just go live. Let's talk, let's talk wrestling. Yeah, so, you, know? you know, last September, yeah. 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 It's a long, many episodes ago, brother. Do you, know how different, do you know how different we were in September as a group? Very, very different. But, um, it was a hell of a time. Tonight was a hell of a time. The confirmed shoot text me. I went on Twitter and I saw you DM the guys about going live and you text me and was like, I've asked, I don't know if I'm going live. And I was like, let's do it. I was here at my desk. Like, let's do it. Um, shoot, I assume you're fired up. I'm very fired up, man. That was... Yeah, um, quite the episode of AEW Dynamite. I'm not gonna call. I'm not gonna call it an all timer or anything, but it was certainly one that got me very fired up, caught me off guard. Yeah, a little bit. You know what's interesting too is it had a very distinct flavor that I don't think necessarily was there for the other all time great Dynamites. Yeah. In some ways. Tonight had the all star vibes, and even though the, the actual match lineup didn't necessarily, in terms of star power, this was kind of the show that I envisioned a lot with Dynamite. It's very very Nitro. I felt tonight felt in a, in a good way. I mean, in yeah. some ways, the stuff that Nitro never would have featured. I mean, the main event was outrageous, but um, very interesting show. Oracle, how are you this evening, pal? I'm well. Um, good. I'll be here for uh, the opening moments here, chit chat yes. a little bit. Absolutely. Before I go um, and embark on. Uh, journey 26 years ago god bless i'm gonna watch um slambury 96 tomorrow i decided oh, i didn't remember that show where it popped me you talking about i want to quickly show love to d3 an086 i assume that's dan but I, you know i don't want to assume dean um dean 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 086 whoever you are thank you for following <laughs> <laughs> and um bait 97 bat 97 e thank you for following and M Chatton Free, thank you for following. And they're all very recent, especially the last couple. So yeah, we appreciate you, you guys. Um, we hope this is fun for you. This is saying that we were uh, we did quite regularly once upon a time, and then as you know, we did more shows and we had a schedule, so this kind of faded away. But it did feel right tonight. I want to lead with it because it was the last one we saw, and we, you know, this is not going to be like the review in order. We're just going to talk about the show, right? Yeah. Daniel Garcia is special. He has turned. I mean, I think he was impressive to begin with. He has been spectacular as of late. The Jericho thing has added something else there. Him being a phony sports entertainer has made his edge even more compelling as a competitor. Oracle, um, you and I had talked about some of the kind of intricacies to Garcia's game that needed slight adjustments and things that he was great at. He was wonderful tonight, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, shout out to Whiskey Dick. What a, what a name. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're welcome, pal. Uh, great yeah. matches. Check those out if you haven't seen them. Um, but uh, yeah, he he's 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 something else, man. Uh, just they were in picture in picture um, after Moxley got opened up. Mm. There's this part where he's just like hammering, doing the hammer punches on Moxley's bloodied head. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just a tremendous, tremendous match. Um, great, great, great stuff. The spot where Moxley does the sort of suplex throw that he always does. Oh, that was terrifying. I couldn't believe yeah. it. I, for a second, there was literally about three seconds where I thought he was actually hurt. I was a little concerned. It was outrageous, yeah. Yeah, you, you could tell Bryce was like really making sure that... that Because he landed kind of side yeah. on, on mm -hmm. the edge, right? Yeah. It was, it was violent. I mean, it, it the whole and the match ruled, man. Like, and it was funny because Excalibur was trying to get out the stuff, and Jericho was like, "All right, Excalibur." And then they like did the spot, did the, into the timekeeper's yeah. table. It was funny. Yeah, but, it's yeah, it, it, it 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 was great. It was great stuff. I said it to I you. Loved, I loved the second hour. The first hour, I didn't hate. There was most, a bit. There was one big segment that will decide how much you like the first hour, right? Basically. Right. Yeah, right. I, I'd be Took curious up, to you know, know uh, your thoughts on that, Joe. But I, 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 I don't even know how I feel about the segment. But I'll be honest, it rubs me the wrong way. But I also don't think it was. I don't know. It was just weird. I think let's just talk about this now because it is important. What you just said about you know 
I don't know how I feel about it is where I'm at right now. There were definitely elements of the content that I would like to take out, like him talking about dropping guys on their heads and well, My screen just got really bright. Okay. <laughs> so the sections about like dropping guys on their head and being not being reckless and stuff, I thought I, I would take that stuff back if I could. The big thing is, and I know this ain't new or anything, that dude's delivery is crazy, man. Like he he was like flair at times in there. A couple times. You know when he went down the camera lens? Mm-hmm. It was flair in, in, in a good way. Um, there is elements of Shane Douglas in a bad yeah. way. He's a great promo. His delivery was tremendous. The content will never be my thing, but I do think it was compelling TV, I have to say. The problem yeah. you have is they yeah. rightly chanted MJF because you kind of had to agree with everything he said, and that's going to be a challenge. So that's the only thing. I don't know. Yeah. It's 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 hard not to address it, right? Yeah. But it's like I wish you could have just said like a cute line and then moved on. I know. That would have been my preference. These things are always difficult. Um I think this was a hundred percent intentional, by the way. Yeah, yeah I, I did too. I just don't know how like he kinda has to be a baby face, I think, which is nuts. So they're, they're probably gonna have to turn him. Yeah. 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 Shoot, what do you think? I went into this segment expecting to hate it. Um, I kind of cringed when it started. Yeah, but I got to be honest. I I liked this segment. My uh, my big worry is that it's going to fall apart at some point. It's and I don't mean like day. I don't mean their relationship. I mean the actual like on screen storyline, and it's just not going to work. Um, but I thought this specific segment actually hit. Yeah, I do um, too. I'm just not sure how you follow. And look, I may be totally wrong. Maybe they'll nail it, and it'll be fucking awesome. Um, mm-hmm. It's possible. You know, Reese. I mean, they just did Punk MJF, so that's kind of would be kind of weird. But at the same time, that group of ex WWE guys suddenly, but like Punk. Framing Punk as an ex WWE guy is a choice that you would. Be yeah, you also anyway. have to. You have to do like he can't be a baby face just because this is his current like hill to die on. You have to like yeah. really work on the character. He's been so bad, so evil. So Yeah, hard. I agree with Rob. I don't I don't see what the end game is here. As this as a standalone segment, I liked it. Um yeah. I'm just not sure yeah. where yeah, it goes from here. Um it is one of those things where Fair or not, um, I think given their audience, they probably have a little bit more leeway to do this and not have it seem quite so stupid as if you'd done done it with, I don't even know what audience that would be anymore, but because I think even WWE's audience for the most part would get this, but like, yeah, it's still not my cup of tea, but his delivery is so good and the crowd was so into it that it was hard to hate it. Um, I did... I like the announcers didn't react to it after. Um, yeah. Although you probably could have done some things in the promo itself to make it more authentic. Like he was out there talking on his own for a long time. So again, this is just this is tinkering with something that was really strong. But like, you hear me? I'm back. Yeah. The big punchline of of you know fuck Tony, fuck you Tony Khan, whatever he said. Called him a fucking mark. If I can mark whatever, if you'd have like made that progression more gradual, it would have made perfect sense to like cut the mic there. But he said so much crazy shit before that that it kind of felt a little phony. But that's like very nitpicky. Like I think like, for what it is, it was really, really good. It isn't really my thing. Um, but I think it could be. I think it could be effective in Max's hands. I do. I mean, it'd be I interesting. The problem with this stuff for me is that like. I don't know. This stuff, obviously not Shane Douglas, particularly, you know, 97 and afterwards. But stuff with Flair, 98, stuff with mm-hmm. Pillman, 90, you know, Loose Cannon. Even the stuff with Punk, which is over 10 years ago now. Yes. That all worked, but that was a very long time ago. And I think... For me, I've seen it so much. 
that I think we've moved past the work shoots. Yeah, I don't know. And I don't know, man. That audience was in that was in big. Well, I know. They might be more at home now than ever, honestly. It may not be a you and I's thing. I, I, I don't know. I, Oh, hell just broke loose here, man. Well, it's like pouring all of a sudden. Wow. Um, um, I see what you're saying. And maybe it is just a me thing. Um, I think it's... I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm Now I feel like I'm talking in circles, but I just don't. You just don't. You just don't like it. It's I, fine. Just, I don't like it either. It's fine. I wonder if it's an age thing. And I'm not old. I don't know. I'm older than you, so yeah. I, I, well, I think it, it just made me say because Steve, Steve mentioned it on Twitter that he was like, "Yeah, this is something that's I kind of got sick of, and then kind of I thought died away twenty years ago. Maybe it's an age thing. I thought that was an interesting point to make. It's in. But. He's kind of in the same boat as me though, too, because he also. The t- like his tweet right before it said that he thought it was really good. So yeah. it's, it's like it's it was good. Yeah, it was. It's good. an interesting dynamic. I think I do think, and I think you're because you've shown the the ability to to understand this in the past. I think I didn't even. I really didn't even hate it. You're I, probably I, I in just, the minority here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's just you know. I didn't even hate it. It's just I don't think it's necessary. Maybe that's the thing. Here's the thing with that, though. What are we doing with MJF if not this? That is the interesting thing. He's done, ta- bro. You've done it all on that side. Carry on, sorry. You've kind of totally... And it's it's, it's not going to hurt Wardlow because we saw that tonight, but you've kind of made everyone forget that he got squashed on Sunday. Yeah. On his side. But at the yeah. same time, you still kind of got the benefit from it for Wardlow. That part's kind of... What was you? What would you possibly... Like, seriously... He has done four straight programs where he put guys in front of him and the baby, in between him and the baby face. Yeah. He got killed by the, the guy that he's been alongside the whole time. I mean, killed, slaughtered by him. It's probably time to do something different. Anyway, now, I'm not saying I'll like all of it. I don't know. I have to see it, right? But, like, while I get the point of it's not necessary, I think there's an argument that actually might be necessary to really maximize what Max what? is going to be for the promotion. You know what? Do you know what? I don't think I'll get heat for this, but I'll say it. Yeah. I think I'd rather him take three months off than do this segment in three months. What if he takes the time off because the idea is this was his suspension? That's kind of what I think is going to happen. I will I will accept it more then for sure. Because they didn't reference it. They did right. not on, – on the commentary, they did not reference it. They came out from the break and they just – they said, hey, Tanashi challenged Punk. Yeah. Which basically is the WCW night, the NWO thing of like it weren't in the format, brother. You know, it was that deal. That's what that was. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't say that because that's when you fucking you might as well say it's in the format. <laughs> right. They ignored mm. it. Um, that's why I was saying I'd have just shortened it just to make it work. But I think that's the idea. I think Max is going to go away, and you know, he will eventually that, I, I be an outsider. I, I, I didn't even hate it. It's just I didn't love it. That's fine. That's really fair. Maybe I'm being contrarian. <clears throat> I don't, I don't think, think you contrarian. Are, like, I think we actually all, I think we're all on the exact same page and conceptually this is not really our thing. I think Shoot and I preferred the segment because I thought his delivery was great and the crowd yeah. was great. I don't think any of us are like fired up for Do we think if the crowd stuff. didn't care for it, do you think we would praise it? I think it would definitely have felt different. I don't yeah. know, but I don't know if that's I mean I don't know how I feel about that as like a a question though, you know. Like it's hard. Like wrestling's it's like, it's like saying, you know, would Rock's promos be good if the crowd didn't like? It's like, well, that's the that's the bit, right? I mean, that's what that's what Max is good at. Is like, he fucking owns the scene, man. He's great at that. He's special in that regard. I mean, I'm, I've been critical of Max's promos on the content side, but he's always been able to command an audience. So, yeah, I don't think any of the three of us are really MJF fans, so to speak. No, I think he's very, very impressive. I do. I, I think <coughs> I do think people overstate like how kind of groundbreaking he is. <laughs> like, he's just a heel to me, and it's fine. My God, there's 60 people here. What the fuck's going on? Strange. What are you guys doing here? Go sleep. No, um, I don't know. I, I think, like, this is actually going to sound ridiculous, but I, honestly, I think this is one you actually have to let play out. Let's see how work shooty it gets. Yeah. If he comes back as an actual outsider babyface and, like, 
jump through the crowd and attack someone. That could fucking rule, genuinely. Because then yeah. it's just an angle, you know? But if it's yeah. like him doing like, you know, you know, like he comes in and he says, I'm not doing a job, and <laughs> then, yeah, it sucks. Like, you just have yeah. to see. It's, it's, it's hard to say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's fair. It's just, I don't, I really don't know how to feel about it. I, just, I don't either. It's fine. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just being critical of how fans are reacting to it. I'll be honest with you. Maybe I'm just being critical of people liking it, and I think that they shouldn't like it just yet. Like what, the segment? Yeah. They like MJF, Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Yeah. I will say I did get actively embarrassed when he said, this is Max Friedman talking. I will say that. Oh, um, that, that was really enough. funny because like, that's your name that's on the a TV problem. show, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> um that was that's when i was like that was when i was like i'm gonna fucking hate this yes me too uh thanks to goalie for following hade star 234 also uh, we appreciate I'm you guys tired of talking about it let's move on to something else all right pal you you, you got us here i was talking about daniel garcia and john moxley what do you <laughs> oh, think of the main yeah, event true. we just had to we just had to address it because you know i'm not gonna be here forever so now let's i'm talking about how awesome anymore. the show I'm looked anymore. visually yeah yeah, it's cool. Big boy arena, bro. They sh- I like they're not gonna keep that set because they're only gonna use it for the big arenas. Um they're definitely using it in Detroit because we've already seen the that's kind of the tell. If they're selling tickets behind the stage, and then you know they're gonna use this set. But then <clears throat> that hard camera shot mm-hmm. where it looked like they were in a eight hundred seat building. Yeah, <laughs> and then they would cut to the got it fucking ruled man i love when the shows look different yeah it's awesome um it's the atmosphere was electric tonight i did say and like this is not relevant now the show happened but like i was texting with shoot and i i did think they were going to go harder on in terms of the lineup for la but obviously the way the show panned out it was the one thing i will say that's about on the wrestle previous one like when I was looking at the lineup, it kind of came apparent to me, like, oh, this is going to be a big match for Garcia. And what I mean by that is, like, obviously, he's wrestling John Moxley. Good one, Joe. But what I mean is you could tell it was going to be, like, positioned in a different way. Like, this was supposed to be, like, a a moment for him, and it certainly was. Um, by the way, wasn't it incredible? King falling and just, like, sort of – he was, like, yeah. in a half state of falling for, like, the last half of his run. It was wild. Yeah, he, he tripped. And he, like, he was like it still. He was, like, up still. <laughs> What a pro, man! <laughs> it actually worked. Like, it honestly let's, worked. Let's, let's let's talk about let's talk about the world's heavyweight champion, CM Punk, hurting his knee on the barricade. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's not injured. I don't think. I no, really hope not. But he banged his knee hard on the barricade when he dove in, yeah, and I he think showed. he probably regretted that. Have you seen the video of him coming out and chasing MJF off at, during the commercial break? Yeah, he's yeah. limping big limping time. Bad. Yeah, it's um. It's whatever, man. I don't, this shit don't bother me. That dude will just sell it for the next three months. You know? Oh, yeah. It's yeah, awesome. it's just, I don't know. It was, it was a little concerning. He had a terrible outing, and he looked awful. But yeah. that was almost – I think it was almost entirely because he fucking hurt his knee. Yeah. I don't think he injured it. He hurt it's, it. That's who he is, too. Like, he's just yeah. sloppy. Like I was I was watching my brother, and I went was, to him. They're building a punk hot tag, which means he's absolutely going to do a springboard fucking clothesline and slip on the rope. And he slipped. My brother was like, "What the fuck? Are you, how did you know it was going?" I was like, "Sam Punk. He always does that shit. He's done it in half of the times he's done that spot. He's messed it up." Like, the, well, the, the best part is just... he just fucking acknowledges it. Yeah, exactly. that's why. It, that's why it's fine. Yeah, exactly. he's always been like that. He'll just acknowledge it. Yeah, he's just always so messy, you know. Um, that's true. It's just he was worse off than usual, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, he certainly was. Yeah, he because certainly, of the... I think there was. They are hit with the bowling too time. ugly line. I popped huge. There was some timing elements too where I think like he, you could tell him he and the gun club hadn't worked at all. Like there was what like a couple of spots where he raised kicks and there was Colton all Colton or whoever the fuck totally yeah. blew a spot. Yeah. Yeah. You could see it was kind of the thing. I will say little thing. I do wish they did like a little more of middle ground work with the FTR Punk Alliance. Like I was saying to the guys earlier, you remember the incredible segment where Punk got juice and he had the uh the go home for the dog collar and he had it around his neck and he was yeah. before him. FTR were the guys that stopped anyone from helping. <laughs> that was three months ago. <laughs> like, I wish it had done, but I mean, it doesn't matter. Well, who gives a fuck, I guess? But it's just it's funny. The FTR, bro, Dax's promo was, my God. I mean, that dude's, yeah, he's, he's awesome. special, right? Dax is special. FTR is special. Tanahashi and Punk. I thought we were going to get Mox and Tanahashi. Mox is kind of, too deep in this stuff, it feels like almost. 
Yeah, I'm not I, even sure. Who knows? Yeah. It's kind of genius the way that they've... Um, because we've talked, you know, I don't, know, I don't it all runs together. We may have talked about this in text as opposed to on a show, but like yeah. Forbidden Door is kind of a weird show to build to. Yeah, we saw that earlier, yeah. Yeah. But what they've done now is Blood and Guts is literally three, you know, that Wednesday after, so you can build to both. Or so you can kind of do your focused, well, not, yeah, or, they don't really ever do focused builds, but you can do your normal pro wrestling build for Blood and Guts while simultaneously. And you don't like, I don't think you want Punk and Tanashi to lock up before Forbidden Door. No, I agree. Like, like as, as tempting as it would be to do like a big tag, it would be tempting, right? Because it'd be cool. Fuck, man, save that moment for United Center. Like, that match is going to be f- incredible, by the way. I mean, it's going to, Jay Shell's going to fucking hate it because it's going to be so slow. <laughs> they're both going to grab their knees the whole time. Oh, God. Gonna be... and, they're, and, and they're going to work so light. Not, and oh. that's probably going to annoy me some. Tanahashi's one of the weakest strikers ever in the he history of wrestling. It's fucking awful. Rules, Oracle. Such he a rules. Pussy. Um, oh, come but... on. You need to go to sleep, young man. Come in here and talk about Hiroshi Tanahashi like that. Oracle, give your final words and please go and watch Great American Bash 1996. Okay, I'm being doing? off. I'm being way too negative and stealing everybody's happiness here. Um, yes. I want to. I want to pop for Blood and Guts though. I popped huge. Yes, for that. good. Uh, I love. I love the all of the uh, JS <laughs> Blackpool Combat Club. Uh, Eddie Santana. Ortiz segments, all of them. I thought, 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 thought both of them were tremendous. Um, hair versus hair match will be fun uh, in two weeks in St. Louis with uh, Jericho and uh, Ortiz. Um, I, of course, we you know we talked about Mox and, and Garcia, great, great match. But I selfishly popped when they said Detroit because I called it. You did. You did. It makes a lot of sense. It really um, does. You know, yeah, I, I, I figured that they would do that because it was the week of Blood or uh, of for, of uh, Forbidden Door, mm-hmm. and it's their first time ever in Detroit, I believe, for Dynamite. Yeah. So, it's the um, big building too. Yeah, L- Little Caesars. Yep. Yeah. Um, that may be the most I've ever been excited for a match in AEW history. Oh yeah, and and yeah. what I like what they're doing is is did you notice that. So he's got Sen- he's 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 got Santana and Ortiz and he's got Moxley with him, right? Although Santana wasn't there tonight, but that was interesting. Um Moxley they, they they made a point of Moxley, you know, saying he was going to be you know yeah. like, now we, we, that means. That, we got yeah. a Danielson promo. And that is going to be... He's got to agree to it, and that's you... going to be the segment we want to see, right, Joe? That is going to be art. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, as we've said a million and one times, one of them's going to take the bullet for the other, and the fucking place is going to cheer. And This is honestly one of the, like, most unique things they've pulled off, and we're only, like, three weeks into the actual angle where Blackpool Combat Club joined. I'm telling you confidence that unless Blood and Gut sucks, based purely on Sunday and tonight, this is going to be a feud and, a, and an angle that people remember for a while. Yeah. Tonight was a bloodbath. Moxley was fucking leaking. Mm-hmm. This is one of the most violent things they've ever set up. And, like, this feels like it's worth Blood and Guts. This is special, man. You know, this is this is very inside baseball, but it's what we do on this show. Tonight was also fascinating, and like they did all the things tonight that they were rumored that they weren't going to be allowed to do anymore. Yeah, and this was with all the big executives in the building after he's had that meeting with I. Uh, that was on I think things are in good shape for AEW. That was on purpose. That was on yeah. purpose. And yeah. this is also I said this the other day. Yeah. He, Mox is one hundred percent the favorite right now for that. He's I in agree. the lead, and I now let me be clear. I shouldn't say one hundred percent. I don't watch enough recent that conference. What I have seen. He is in the form of his life, and he's so locked in in terms of ideas and adding different flavor to his matches. There was a while there where he had very much fallen into a formula. It happens to everyone. Nothing wrong with it. He was a top guy. And as he came back, man, he is – every match is like a challenge. How can I make this the most memorable it can be? Dude, I'm so excited to see him live. 
Yeah, he's special. Because and that's the thing is, I know he's not going to phone it in because I've seen what he does in these indie, indie yeah. shows. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's liable to bleed all over Dayton. He's probably going to come out to the uh, the original. Have you seen that's like his thing? Apparently, he does like when he does indie spots, he comes out to like, the original Wild Thing. No, I've been I'm, told this is a thing, and that's like incredibly awesome to me. <laughs> when he came, the the uh, the five show, he came out to the one that he uses in AW. But... Oh, there you go. Because I, I know that when he replaced Eddie, he used it, and they, the promotion said he's asked for. He said that's a thing he wants to be like a difference. No fucking, <laughs> a fucking small building, and he comes. <laughs> that's tremendous. He does use shit list on, so that's true. Maybe um, it was there. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I just didn't notice. I don't know. Oracle, I know you said you'd be around half an hour. Um, mm. Before you watch the Great American Bash, would you like to make any final comments? Yes, I will say something. Oh no! Oh, always say something with that, yeah. folks. I will apologize for being spiteful at times tonight. Tanahashi one was venomous. Well, I was, I was performing, but it was, it was, it was too far. Personal. At this, this time in the morning, that was a little much. Um. I probably shouldn't tell people that they shouldn't like things. It's not fair. Or <laughs> <laughs> not talking to the class. <laughs> um, honestly, as negative as I sounded about some things, <clears throat> I thought it was a great show. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally about to click that. I was hovering over it, and you clicked it. That was amazing. <laughs> I amazing thought stuff. the rest of the second hour was great. Um, yeah. I did like the women's tag team match. Hell yeah. Um, I enjoyed the Wardlow squash. I wish JD had got a few more chops in, but otherwise, yeah. you know, and, and the post-match segment was very entertaining. Um, the part where he picked up the mic and uh, said – this guy doesn't watch the product. Huge oh, fucking ruled. Yeah, we should. That should be um, clipped or immediately. That's good. That's, that's good the kind clip. of thing that will continue to help him and get him over. That kind of He's, clever. Yeah. That's the type of stuff that'll get you over in today's cool wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. <clears throat> yeah. Great. Great second hour, and of course, the last fifteen minutes. The first I loved with the with the first Jericho Appreciation Society segment with Eddie and and Ortiz. Yeah. Um. You know the Max stuff. Honestly, didn't hate it. Um, it was just kind of it's a wait and see game, and it is. Yeah. It's tough for me personally, um, not personally, but as a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I give two shits. Give two shits. I give two shits. I mean, you know, um, I was honestly a little bit bummed. That Punk was off tonight in the ring, but there were circumstances that caused it. That actually kind of took me out of the show a little bit because I was honestly a little bit concerned. But I also was worked. I, I worked myself into a shoot about that. You did. Uh, speaking of work shoots, you were sweating bullets. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, ultimately it was a great show. <laughs> and don't worry. Um, I don't think we were worried. I think Punk Tanahashi will be good. Good. Um, <laughs> good. I'm glad. <laughs> I just, you know, I like to have some fun. and You do. We love when you have fun. You do. do you have any comments on the uh, Platinum Jubilee of the Queen while you're here? <laughs> Giving this kind of closing statement. Any, any other comments? Any, any other sweeping gestures you'd like to make or are you are you content at this point in the game oracle um <laughs> i'm deeply concerned about tony khan having an in-ring confrontation with maxwell jacob cream oh, you God. should be but we're gonna cross that bridge when we get to <laughs> it. i will not lie if there's anything i'm concerned about it's that segment if, yeah, if, if, if they go that route that's all i'm gonna say but in yeah. terms of things that i, I would, think he I think he knows better, but you never know for sure. Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. He we probably does see. shoot. You're probably right about that. Um, I could see, see them doing like a video clip, maybe, where you know where he's like from, like the. I don't know. Yeah. Even yeah. that might be a bridge too far. What if they do the dinner debonair thing together? Oh Jesus Christ! There you go. 
Um, talk about the, the novel. Remember the impact promo? They were actually funny at first, and then they fell apart. What's that? The pre-tape Tony Khan and Tony Schiavone impact promos where he just would bury impact. Yeah. The first couple were really funny, and then like he realized he just, everyone thought they were funny and started trying too hard. And he came. He looked like an absolute insane person every week on Access TV. Yeah. 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 The one they did on on New Year's Eve, where he was clearly not sober for, fucking hilarious. What about when Dax got the mic and was like, "I've done the stuff Punk hasn't done." Yeah, and I was like, "Wait, what?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, drugs, drink." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how about how about him holding a grudge against that guy, that Nick guy? <laughs> oh him, god! Constantly bringing up. I hope he brings show. it up at the next at the the Forbidden Door post show. I hope that's the first thing he says is ask what he thought of the length of the show. I feel like that's something he would do. Oh, me. it is. He <laughs> did. Yeah, he's petty like that. Jesus. Jesus. Our pal is okay. still at the post. Be- before show I leave, imagine Tony Khan and Vince McMahon in the same room today. I know. I don't even want to imagine that. Vince wouldn't be able to stand it, would he? No. I don't know if Vince still has conversations and stuff, man. They just move him around, you know? Yeah, I think he just kind of, they just open up Vince's coffin and he sort of sits up at the end of the picture with his fucking. Oh, on that seen, note. Have you, his, have you seen his eyes? They're sunken in. Oh, it's craziness, man. What do you think he thinks of Alexa's new theme? The hell is this? <laughs> Did you see JJ's comment? Vince <laughs> <laughs> says a bell like Lolo's uncle. Right. We're not behind the table. That's right. true. Me too. Right, right. Folks, uh, we're I'm going. I'm I'm heading out. I apologize for really. I do. I was I'll, no, a little bit too you're... negative, but I'm I'm in a better mood now after having yeah. some fun. So, all right, folks. Uh, tune in tomorrow for Fed Dead at six thirty Eastern. Uh. For God, the uh, classic flagship show, The Late Night Grin, at 11 p.m. Eastern, a.k.a. 1105 Eastern, which I'm sure Shoot is absolutely thrilled for. Oh, I, I can't wait, man. I'm so happy. You're going to have to carry us because all of us are dreading it, right? You're going to have to right. I actually lucked out because I don't work Friday, so I actually will probably be awake because I'll, I'll sleep yeah. till noon. Fair. So. Respect it. All right, fellas. Grinners. All right, mate. Take have care. Joe is frozen. Hopefully, shoot does not have to be talking to a frozen Joe. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Only one oracle of wrestling, brother. What a performance. Agreed. Dynamite was good, huh? It was all right. Um, So, you know Dynamite, AEW's flagship show? Yes. The show we've all been waiting for. Do you think it's funny, as I do, that, like, I think there's actual genuine worthwhile conversations about the big picture stuff while this show's honestly almost definitely on the best run in its history. Yeah. I have refused the notion that Dynamite through the last three months hasn't been on like an average to the best it's ever been. Um, I think it kind of clearly is. Who? Somebody... Got him. Was it Joey Janela who said he books every show like a pay per view? Yeah, that's that's fair. That's what, like, literally, I think, you know, a long time ago when we started the late night grin in 1947, um, I used to have a talking point about mm. the AEW playbook and how it's not really a playbook that's ever been used before. It's a good talking point, and I still think it's very much. More true than ever. Yeah, I think I think we're still, and I even us, like I don't, we still kind of try to evaluate it under these traditional professional wrestling, yeah, eyes, and that's just not how they. they... Weekly events, the best, the best way you've ever put it. Yeah, it's a, it's an event every week, and it's loosely tied together every week, and if you don't like that, that's I legitimately think it's a very valid criticism. I'm not going to go into that rant I went into last time we talked about this, but it's 
it is what it is at this point. It's become very clear that this mm -hmm. is like an intentional thing, that this is how he's so gonna, structured. Yeah. Yeah. It's how he's gonna do professional wrestling. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> I agree. Which, it also leads it to there are times where the individual shows are incredible. And if you try to look at the big picture of the promotion, it's kind of confusing. Um, yeah. This, it's been those times kind of as of late, right? Yeah. Which is why I think like I, you know, we talked about, we don't really want to do the big picture conversations anymore. They don't really yeah. feel relevant. Yeah. I agree. Not. And that's not even like that almost can come off. Like I'm trying to say you shouldn't criticize it, which is not what I mean at all, but it's yeah. just like, you kind of have to evaluate AEW on a week to week basis. Yeah. Yeah. I think the one thing I will say is I do genuinely think he's flying more by the seat of his pants than he was before. Oh, he absolutely is. That, yes. Because, like, you know, tonight's Dynamite, he definitely would have announced like four matches for that on the pay per view before. Like a year yeah. ago, he was way ahead on that stuff. The problem with that is you can't really critique that unless it affects the quality of the show. Yeah. In some ways, the late additions to cards have been like the strongest additions where he's clearly, you can tell where there's been times he's looked at a lineup and gone, we need some punk and we need some this. Week. Like a great example is when he did punk and Penta out of nowhere. Because fuck it, let's do it. Yeah. And uh, so you have to be very, you know, I've said this to you before and, and we struggle with it sometimes. It's like, you, it's worth having big picture conversations because it's, it's fun, but you can, you at some point can only, judge what's in front of you right like i've said to you before like my ideal wrestling is probably more like serialized than what they do like i think this last couple of weeks the blood and guts thing has been like spectacular yeah it's, i think it's beautiful it's, it's exactly my ideal wrestling but if every dynamite review started with me saying that at some point i have to just review it's in front of me and in fact, like I tried that with WWE, even. I mean, there's a lot of fuck. How many things we change about their presentation? But when you watch it, you just have to watch it as it is, right? It is what it is. Right. Like, it don't mean it ain't relevant, but I don't think that's the case of AEW, where it's like whatever you prefer in terms of style, you have to judge it week to week. And like right now, they're kind of killing it in that regard. Now, do I think the last preview build was their strongest? No. Do I think they've ever been great at those? I no, say they've never been great at that. <laughs> I think the difference this time was. The card they ended up with was good, but not as spectacular as some of the ones in the past. So it was more apparent to people, you know. That's that's all I really think it was. I mean, let's see what all out looks like with Punk as champ, bro. I think you're going to have some mega matches. I really do. I believe that. So we shall see. I will. I will stand by the fact that I think that was 100 percent intentional. Yeah. And that. Yeah. I. Would, yeah. That was. Intentional. It felt like him to be honest. If it was a debut, I think they would have hyped it differently. Yeah. We've been waiting a long time. Um, so just to kind of quickly, you know, broad strokes, and we'll just continue to talk shop here, because I want to, this don't want to be formatted, right? Fuck that. Fuck formats. This is the late night green, damn it. Um, this acclaim thing is smart, right? Like it works, the, man. The way they're like baby faces, and like inevitably that's going to be the thing. Yeah. But you kind of keep them as like losing heels until you're ready to do it. It's pretty, it's pretty neat, pretty effective, right? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> it's, I, mean, I have no like we've I have I actually like this gun club and acclaimed act now it's going to wear out it's welcome mm -hmm. but right now I think it fucking rules like they're good yeah like Hitman Punk said they're goons it works now if they were like, like if they were trying to push them seriously then it wouldn't work but this because is, they're just yeah. orcs it's perfect this has always been my thing Firstly, I genuinely like Bones. I think Max is a good wrestler. The, you know, the rap gimme is whatever. Um, I definitely think there are major pitfalls to that, but we'll talk about another day. I think they're a fun act. I think they're a good live act, especially if they get the crowd going. I think sometimes, though, you you have to kind of pick it. Like, when they were feuding with Darby and Sting, I personally thought that was probably stretching them a thin. I don't think they need to be in that kind of role. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. to me, they're perfect in this kind of... You know, for now, they're perfect as, like, fun losers, which is mostly what they're used, um, how they're used. So, nothing wrong with that. I, you know, I think Bowens is excellent and Max can wrestle, so I'm not trying to knock the guys, but in that tag division, that's how I would personally use them. No. But it's whatever. Um, I think you know that I don't actually, like, get mad when the acclaim come on. I, just, oh, you know, yeah. so, other than that time, I broke my TV. 
Um, you do hate the you gun at? club, though. I think they kind of suck, yeah. Yeah. I don't... They're actually good stooge heels. They're just like... That run when they were, like, undefeated was hilarious. Yeah. Felt like a rib. I still think it was on me. It probably was. Do you want know like, a month build to their tag title match with Jurassic Express? <laughs> And they like jump Christian and shit, and they threw, they threw one of them oh. into the snow. Do you remember yeah. that? It was interesting. That um, fucking ruled. <laughs> yeah, you get. Uh, where are you at on Tanahashi Punk? Is that like is that pop? Yours just like like intrigue. No, I'm fired up for it. Like yeah. I'm, I um, I mean, obviously, if if you happen to be someone in the chat who's followed my Twitter account for years, I'm much more open minded than I was. Yeah. When I was just reciting Fed Mecca nonsense on my timeline all the time, mm -hmm. but um, I've seen Tanahashi a couple times. I'm excited for it. I, I it, it's hard not to understand the significance of this. <laughs> like, yeah, I think this is. I, I'll be honest. I think this is going to be special. Yeah, that crowd, <laughs> these two storytellers. In a lot of ways, I talk. I told you this earlier. It's like this is a mystery show for me because yeah. I haven't. I mean, I've seen some of these guys, but I haven't. I certainly haven't seen any of them with like extensively, and that's almost the appeal of it to me. Like, I almost don't want to do a whole bunch of homework and get to know all these guys before. Like, I want, I want to go into the show and pop for these guys that I've never seen before, and you know. See a lot of high profile stuff. I'm fascinated to see what the lineup is. Um, well, tonight made it interesting because, like, it kind of felt like Okada and Punk was one that they've hinted at. Um, Stylistically, I think this is actually the best fit. Tanahashi is what makes him so interesting as a top guy in New Japan history is that he's like very American style yeah. pro wrestler. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, like his guys are like Sean and fucking Steamboat and guys like that, and like he re like his title matches would feel like NWA title matches, and like well that sure seems like something Punk can yeah, <laughs> jam with, right? So like, it's just this to me is everything about. Pro I mean, look, maybe it will suck. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be fucking great though, and I just love you know two guys who are banged up, like Tanner's fucking in pieces, like his knees are shot, and I have no doubt this match is gonna rule. I it's gonna be special. They're both pros. Absolutely, they are. You know, there'll um, be a couple spots that'll get fucking clipped and yeah, clipped and made fun of, but we won't care. So, yeah, yeah, this this is interesting. Hangman and Okada, you just got to be Hangman's gonna be a really interesting challenge presenting him the right way. You know, um, quickly, I want to show some love because this rules. Firstly, Jay Light Guardian followed, and then an anonymous gifter, gift out, gifted five community subs. Anonymous. Tony? Thank you, Tony. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, also, Brendan Rose sent a super grin. He said, ban me, you effing marks. Ban me, pop. Um, that was a Maxwell Jacob Friedman yeah, reference. Yeah, it took me a second to get it. I was like, yeah, wait. Oh, it did. <laughs> You're not banned, man. Thanks for that, pal. Um, I want to see. I'm, I'm trying to think of other things here because I don't want to forget stuff. By the way, JR actually popping for Tanahashi, and that's like a shoe. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. Right? He really he admires him. Yeah, I knew, yeah. yeah, really admires him. Like I think I remember him telling the story of that was the one guy he had to take a picture with when he worked the Tokyo Dome show. So that's that's the that's the real star, you know. That's the top guy. The fucking he likes Okada. He loves Okada too. Yes, Jr. Yeah. Jr. will be fascinating calling this show. I hope he's in the right mood for it because if he is, he'll be great. If he's yeah. in a different kind of, different right. kind of spot, <laughs> um, I wonder if Kevin Kelly will be on this. Yeah, that's true. Kind of would make sense to like mix those up a little bit, right? Yeah, it would. I mean, I'm thinking of their like you could have Rocky on, on color, I guess. Hmm. I don't know. Does Meech know Hangman's wrestling next week? That's an untold. You, you, you hate to see that. Meech is old, man. Yeah. And I told I text you this every day. You gotta let him slide. He's old. He's old. That's fair. The 73 and in, in his username is actually the year he was born. He changed it every year. Yeah. And that's how many years he's forgot. So he's really he's probably 75. Right? Yeah. Probably. Bless his heart. Is David Finley good? 
Do you know what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he's kind of a nothing, but Hangman would have a good match with him. Fuck. Oh, yeah. Hangman just whacks guys, man. He's, he's awesome. Did um, you see the Tash's tweet? No, but he's good at Twitter. Very good. He asked that the forbidden, forbidden doors open for him. Oh, I mean, I hope. Yeah. That would be fun. I do wonder if he's kind of like actually legitimately kind of completely frozen out of that. That could be a real thing. Yeah, I know. Probably I mean, not, in, though. I mean, they have so many wrestlers, though, in fairness. Like, would he even be on? I mean, I love Takeshi, but would he be on it? Like, think about it. This, this is hard. I hope they do a big, like, battle royal on the buy in. This should be a show they try to get, like, everybody on without making it four and a half hours where guys from wrestling media argue with Tony Khan about it for what an hour we, after the show. But if it goes long, can we talk about length for going to pay views? I think that's we really haven't had that conversation yet. We should explore it. Yeah. What I like to do is, like, when they had a match that I don't want to see, a part of my brain is like, well, Joe, you know, you could go and do other things. Maybe you could, like, you know, talk to some people and maybe pick up the phone or maybe go and, you know, do something productive. And then the other part of me is like, actually, I'm just going to sit there and get really fucking mad about it and look at the clock all the time and say, when's this match ending, this piece of shit match? I'm a... I'll be interested to, to see Oracle's thoughts on Punk versus Tanahashi. Yeah. By, by that point, he's probably going to be thinking about, like, family vacations he took when he was 12. Um, it, look, it all seriousness, I get it. We've both been there with WrestleMania where it's too much. I, I understand it totally. I just... You know that playbook thing you were talking about? Mm-hmm. The reason, once upon a time, you talk about length is because you go... You don't want to burn out the fan. You know, you got to keep them. One match can go long. One match can have high spot. But you can't burn out the fan. It's like if that fan has now just become the one, the, the very few people that actually are talking about the imaginary playbook, what does that mean? If most people that buy the pay-per-view are just watching the wrestling and having fun, are we now at a point where we're we're booking for an imaginary person and the only person that actually wants to book that way is the one who's trained by a non existent rule set, you know? I've I think I said this already, but this is this is my honest take on this. If you think the shows are too long, yes, it's fine. Perfectly valid. Yeah. If you think everyone thinks the shows are too long, you're wrong. It's that mm-hmm. simple. If you personally think if the shows are too long for you, cool. I mean, yeah. I, that's understandable. Probably you could but, adjust at this point, though. They're all going to be long. You yeah, know, that's uh, every time. But it's like if you think everyone feels that way, they don't. They just don't. No. The no. crowd, that crowd on at the pay per view was louder in the last hour than they were for the rest of the show. That was my the only real. And if it's good wrestling, the only thing with long shows is I don't like when the main event is like an albatross. And yeah. it's harder to work. I agree. And that was not the case of Double or Nothing. Yeah. Objectively speaking, that was not the case. The only match that suffered from it, I would say, was Kyle and Darby, who did have the reaction of, oh, my God, we've been here for a long time. And they had such a good fucking match. That needed to be on the show. The show would be mm-hmm. worse for that match. I actually believe that. That match was that good. Um, by the way, talk about a guy who's really found rhythm, man. That dude's fucking O'Reilly's clicking, you know, in ring. And I know I actually agree with you about his limitations elsewhere, but in ring. No, he's a good like, worker, yeah. I think that's a good example of where, you know, their rotation sometimes hurts other guys. Kyle's wrestled every week for about four weeks now. And I think it's, you can see it in him. I mean, granted, he's got about 100 pieces of tape on his shoulder and you know, he's fucking got the cupping shit. And the, but I do think you can see it. Um, that brings my, you that. Good. Yeah. Good. True. That transitions to what we haven't talked about, which is that 10 man was fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll circle back to that uh, quickly because this is more. I will say four hours and 40 is like, is excessive, and four hours is the best. Is, is fine. I, 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 yeah. I, if, yeah, it was probably like the last one was exception, right? In fairness. Yeah. But 440, you know, is not four hours, 340, 350, I think. I, I think that's probably right for four pay-per-views a year, honestly. Yeah. I certainly don't think they should be in two hour 45 pay-per-views. I I'm hate sorry. that take. Yeah, like, no, it's me too. I don't pay $50 to, to see a two hour and 45 minute show. Like, 
Yeah. They have too much talent for a two hour and forty five minute pay per view. I agree. Like now, if they did twelve pay per views a year, then yeah, that's different. Yeah, and and here's the thing with that. Let's just say in two years they sign a deal with HBO Max. We're done with pay per view. We're just going to do events for HBO Max. Twelve pay per That's no problem with me. It's just it's different. It, it's not <laughs> right or wrong. It's just different. Like their roster could be awesome in that setting, right? Where you just yeah. spin it around and rotate. It's just anyway. Um. The 10 man. I'm sorry. I know people get mad. We need to appreciate the young bucks. Dude, While they're great. They're, they're, they're greater than great. They're like once ever. They're, they're honestly like, and I'm not trying to just look, everyone else in this match is great. Like, this is their match. Well, nine of them, nine out of 10. This is their match. They're so good at these matches. Like, genuinely think they could hire one of us in them. Um, their ability to sequence things, to spotlight others. Like, I always said it in the middle of their tag title. I said, like, I think there's a real argument they're the best tag team ever. Um, I think that's just absolutely – like, I that's kind of factual. I think in history – you know, we talk about Rob Van Dam a lot. I think in 20 years it would be, like, fucking inevitable you list them in your top five. I think history would be very kind to those fellas. Yeah. I – these – Matt, and it, look. This was actually genuinely good. Um, But even when these matches are absolute chaos, if you've got a hot crowd and a multi-man match with a lot of stars in it, it, that like those don't miss Mm -hmm. Um, because they're just fun. But this one was actually genuinely like good and not just like chaos. Um, I got really excited for a second because I thought my bold Young Bucks prediction was actually going to be right. Yeah, the um, announcement at the end was kind of out of nowhere, right? It's because they were they were out of time. They yeah, but I mean, they, the announcement itself, like Lucha Bros, was kind of like, oh. <laughs> yeah, because they well, yeah, they had to cut the run down the card segment. Rob, what I mean is, considering the match they had, I didn't expect the Lucha Bros to be the announcement anyway. Yeah, it's fair. Like what you said, time, actually though. made a lot of sense. Be, yes, they hand awesome. picked it. Did you see someone commented on their post and was like, "You should have done the Hardys in." Cali and they said, wait until we've, what we've got. And it was obviously the Lucha Bros because they see them as like their, yeah, that's like their kind of their opponent saying in their mind, you know? But yeah, when they pinned Jungle Boy, I was like, fuck, they really are going to win the tag belts yeah. on Friday. <laughs> yeah, I would have been fine with it. Um, yeah, I ain't got a problem with that. that. The Rampage looks really good, man. What's the other stuff on Rampage? Um, we got the TV title match with uh, Scorpio and Dante Martin. Yeah. And we've got Kira Hogan versus Athena. I wish we'd have got that Bob Fish Joe match on there. I wish. Yeah. I think we're going to get that. You've, you've now frustrated me by, by, you showed me saying, and I can't have it, you know? Yeah. Seems like Joe may be gone for a little bit. Him not wrestling in Cali is kind of, you know. Yeah. I, I think, I don't think it's because he's injured. I think it's just more probably a case of like, because you, because they shot the angle immediately after. So I would assume it's probably a case of he's wrestled like, four straight matches in four weeks or whatever. So it's just kind of rotate and saying that. <laughs> when do they like sell injuries? And shit? That's true. <laughs> He'll miss like a week of TV and come out of a fucking that head fight. Like specifically it. done though. It did. Yeah, it did. Um, uh, what was it? This, this here, bro. This Luchasaurus business. He should legitimately give Nick Jackson like half his pay. He did that thing where he like hooks their head and slams it into the mat, and Nick Jackson took a fucking spike bump. Power is back. The king has arrived. He fucking rules, doesn't he? Fred Prince. He's also hosting a. Did you see this revolutionary yeah. show that he's hosting for the World Wrestling Federation? He will make it kind of good. I'm not lie. You... Dude, they're doing a show about the Monday Night War. Which, sorry, when was that? This is like the 1997 I, to 2000. We can't do this, don't we? have a show. We have the historical oracle does it every week. We can't do it. <laughs> I don't have this now. <laughs> <laughs> we, the family, the network. Um, <laughs> this was. Dude, they're insane. doing Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels. Dude, Hikaleo leapt over the top rope and just landed on his head. Yeah. And JR, like, nearly shit his pants. He was so scared. It was wonderful. Um, is there anything else on Dynamite we didn't talk about? 
Yeah, we need to talk about Mira, but I want to talk about this. Seriously, this is me being sincere. Genuinely. Athena has really struggled through the years being confident as a promo. Oh, she was good tonight. Bro, I like this is gonna sound corny. I don't give a fuck. I was like genuinely proud of her. Like <laughs> she actually she, she came across like a polished like TV star, which like in fairness she should, but like let's be honest, that ain't how it works. <laughs> She was fucking. She was a good promo. I mean, she she has a she's a nerd. She is who she is. She's gonna say some stuff that's kind of corny. That's fine. She was likable though, and she had energy, and she was a baby face. Just shows you, right? Yeah, Comfort. it was very good. I was very worried about that, and I like her. I was too. But yeah. yeah, that ruled. And a man. Oh, Stoke. Stoke and Jade <laughs> together is gonna be fucking awesome, bro. Smart Mark is good at what he does, but that dude is different. <laughs> Yeah, still, he's, uh, he's presence and just have fucking. Oh, he's one of the great managers. He's he's like this nickname's gonna pop you because you know it was once our guy's thing, but he is still a like a best kept secret. Yeah, there are people that don't fully get who, what Stoke is, and like in two years, scratch that in six months, he's gonna be like the consensus number one manager of this like time. And the big thing, and I've said this before, and I love this as, a, as like a possibility. I love having a Jake out there or a Tully or these legends. I love seeing it. But Stoke is their first guy that can be like, when one day people look back on this kind of golden era of AEW, he was their great manager the way that... Oh, yeah. He frankly, can do you know, yeah. so much in this company. Yeah. As a host of certain shows, would be interesting, right? Imagine yeah. you want to see shows. God, man. Yeah, he was his laugh when uh oh when Jade said not tonight. God man. Yeah. Shoot, imagine you know that Saturday morning show you wanted where yeah. it's like prime time basically, like you do like recap. Could you imagine him in Bobby's role? Could oh, you fucking God, imagine yeah. Renee and Stone? Or Paul White. Yeah. Paul Oh, hold up. That would be amazing. Paul White and Stoke? Yes. Yes. I wasn't because doing Stoke, a bit, man. Stoke would like, he'd like baby face Paul because Paul's so big. Yeah. <laughs> and then just throw into clips, you get like one exclusive match a week. This is honestly, the Paul White thing is my favorite bit. Because ever, like, clearly he had a conversation with Tony. Yeah. Like, clearly he did because. Like, suddenly he became, like, the lead announcer on the show. Most of the time, Tony's there every now and then. But at the same time, he immediately, like, started trying. He's, like, calling moves now and shit. It's wild. Yeah, he did. I'm not, he, like, some of this is still a bit, but I actually do think he's, like, I wouldn't put him on Dynamite, but he's actually he, uh, fun now. He did send an interview. He did a one, I don't know who the actual platform was, because I just read it. Um, he did an interview about his status in AEW and he explained his hip situation and he was like, listen, man, I came here to work on my commentary. And like he said, he used the phrase work on Like that gives you sense this was actually his intention maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like get comfortable in the color chair and then try and do – and um, he has this, this wonderful bit where he's like, there's so many great wrestlers. I don't want to take their TV time. Like, I pick my spots. I'll tell Tony when I want to do some wrestling. And he did say he'd be interested. He said – no belts, he said, but the one thing you could talk me into is a tag run if it would help someone. And I immediately, because of course I did, I started pondering like hilarious tag team pair. Like imagine, I mean, there's, there's a few. I mean, you could do like Paul White and Orange Cassidy as a team. Like, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> you could do that. So, like, this, but he's not going to do it. It's, he's there to be to be a commentator. So, Who do you think Tanahashi is going to wrestle on the YouTube taping on Friday? Can you imagine if he just QT works like Marshall. Ryan Nemeth? QT, it'll be QT. God, I, I actually, that's not going to happen, but can you imagine? They just put that graphic up on like a Sunday. AW Dark this Tuesday, Tanahashi versus QT Marshall. <laughs> it would fucking, we would just call it like the TV title match. Or like yes. <laughs> QT, I was, um. I was pondering this. Like, you and I are going to do a TW at some point. We had a concept. I've legitimately forgotten it. I'm not doing a bit. Um, and I was sitting thinking, I was like, what if we did a thing where we booked like 1986 WWF, we just have QT Marshall as the IC champion? <laughs> <laughs> and I was talking to my, I was to my brother, I was like, 
It's probably a little bit one note, right? He's like, what, the fact that you just put one, right? I was like, yeah, but still, can you imagine? <laughs> we used to have QT and he's working like Savage and Steamboat. And... Yeah, just constantly feuding for the Intercontinental title but never wins it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it was, it was like 1987 side. UWF, but with Macho Man Randy Savage. There you go. I knew Savage was involved. Um, we'll get there eventually. Twitch yeah, we'll actually it. makes it a lot more like natural, honestly. It makes it good for it. So we'll do it um, later. Keep it one handy was incredible. Yes, she's a fucking nerd, man. Just let her be, you know. Um, JJ says scripts away so much in so much energy from people. That is who she's in person. There are fans that will like swear by her scripts in wrestling, and God bless, they just want different wrestling than I do. That's all I can say, really. They work for some people, but yeah, for they the do. most part. Because I remember, people, like, like I they, told yeah. you, when she wrestled Thunder Rosa at Warrior Wrestling, and she didn't even talk there, but like, even just like her in ring charisma was totally different than what it yeah, was. She in, seemed comfortable. In WWE. Yeah. Yeah. My um, her stock went what, and I, I mean, I've always kind of liked her, but her presentation was always weird and like mixed. We, we had this conversation already, but yeah, yeah I'm really excited for oh. her. Oh, yeah, QT and Hennig, fucking awesome for the AWA championship. That's what we should do. We should put him in AWA. He's Botwinkle's protege. He's a little <laughs> brother. Yeah, that could be interesting. Um, a couple other things I want to talk about. Miro's back. Paul White has a place in Maine. <laughs> that fucking rules. I want to move to Maine. <laughs> Paul White. Yeah. <laughs> Miro's back. Um, I, he's good, huh? I said it a couple weeks ago, man. I'm telling you, I know he's been an active. Dustin Rhodes versus Tanahashi, Fred says. God damn. I know he's been an active. If he stays in the ball game and he hasn't got movies and TV shows to do, he is a tippy top guy, bro. I'm telling you, oh, that dude. Yeah. Be, like people have got to be careful. Do not sleep on Miro. Do not remember. No, do not forget who he was last summer. Who do you have Miro beat at Forbidden Door? Ishii. That's who I was thinking too. <laughs> yeah. Makes perfect, yeah. Um, my thing with Mira, I said this earlier, and I really believe this. If you look at the Hill lineup, there is an opening. And after tonight's segment, there's even a bigger one because MJF may not be a Hill anymore. <laughs> look at the Hills, yeah. and this even assume Punk turns. Punk's going to drop it to a baby face, whether it's Eddie, Moxley, whoever, I don't care. There's going to be a Hill next up. Adam Cole is the favorite right now. It's fair to say, right? Assuming yeah. MJF is not in this role, to be clear. Adam Cole is the favorite, but I do not think he is cemented in that role the way that like uh, Hangman was cemented as the champ after Kenny. Right. If Miro stays in the ball game and has not got other stuff to focus on, and if he does have other stuff to focus on, God bless him, good luck to him, hope he makes his money. I'm telling you, man, he can be the world champion in this promotion. Oh, and I agree. You know I'm not one that always does the what future world champ thing because it's like there's people will overdo it. Miro is... He's a he's a top guy, an absolute top guy. So, yeah, it's, it's just interesting. I like that kind of stuff. The competition's good, you know. It's good for the roster. Because um, the babyface side is like the fucking, it's like the Hall of Fame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, right now you've got, like, if you just look at the legends, you've got Punk, Moxley, Danielson, and Joe. It's like just legend babyfaces. You've got Darby, obviously Hangman, like Jungle Boy. Crazy. What's the ceiling if you turn Christian Cage heel? Very high. That's Not world champion, think. but very yeah. high. And then, yeah, yeah Andrade's yeah. a good one who they can always heat up. Um, yeah, I think him and Roosh might be an actual team for a bit. I think so too, yeah. Which I don't know how I feel about, to be honest, because Roosh is so hot and cold, but I think he'll be switched on for AEW because it's fucking AEW. I've never seen him. Yeah, he's, he's very good. He's just, he's very like, you can tell when he's into it or not. So AEW will probably bring it out of him. Christian is really, honestly, a vacancy they kind of need filling in terms of like he'll. Starks he'll is work a good great. one who they need to. Yeah, I keep. I, I did this earlier. I did the exact same talking point and forgot Ricky. I don't like. You know, Ricky's my guy. I don't know why I'm not. Made, he, he'd probably be my first choice on that list, to be honest with you. In terms of yeah. him. I, I, <clears throat> I tweeted yesterday. I think he, I actually wanted to be Punk's first like title contender after Forbidden Door. I think we need to get Ricky some big time programs where he has like in ring talking segments where he goes back and forth with top guys. Just really get him where he is. Um, the other one that I like is the House of Black. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, Christian, 
as a heel that can kind of take losses and go 50-50 with top guys can be unbelievable for that TV show. Like, you look at the babies I just run down, like, imagine, like, Christian working Derby in a TV main event. Mm-hmm. Christian working Moxley, Kingston, Daniels. <laughs> like, fuck, man. Punk, imagine that program. I kind of I kind of like the the Griff Garrison shout. He's actually pretty good. Yeah, gimmick change Luchasaurus from Griff, Griff Garrison is Tom Kahn, AJ Subs. That's interesting, yeah. I like Griff. It's interesting. I think you got to be careful with the faction stuff, but yeah, it pops me, so I don't really mind. But I do get it. I like Griff. He's got a huge anchor tighter around him right now. But Julia escaped. Oh, we... <laughs> yeah. Um, did you lose me? Your sound is way behind your video right now. It is. I don't know if that's you or me. I don't know. I'm sure it's fine. I can, you're, you're fine for me, so it's probably on mine. What? Do I sound okay? Yeah, it's just I think it fixed itself now. Okay, well, let it play. Yeah, out. It, did. it did. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, Johnny Elite is is uh, yeah. Anyway, I want to talk about the women's tag. Mostly really about, good. I want to talk about Jamie Hayer, who, in a match with a few good wrestlers, was far and away the best performer in the match. Yes. If I was Jamie Hayer, I would actually say to Tony Khan, can I team with Britt Baker forever? Because the fact that her offense and bumping has no impact whatsoever makes me look like I am, in fact, actually Stan Hansen in 1981. Um, I'm not even saying that to be a dick. That is actually true. Like mm-hmm. Them being a team is hilarious because one of them wrestles with an absurd degree of like velocity and violence, and the other one is just like doing... Just shit. Or take a shit. <laughs> it's, it's wild, man. Jamie's she's on a different level right now. She's spectacular. It really is. I just need a tag. It was mostly really good. Um I actually thought the closing stretch was a little rough. Um happens a lot. Britt I don't want to do this again, but it's like she wrestles in slow motion. Especially um, late in matches, right? Yeah. Um, I, I thought they had a lot of nerve putting that 16 and one in her last 17 matches graphic up for Ruby Soho. Um, I thought they had a lot of nerve having Ruby Soho win this. <laughs> I wish you turning heel. I already did. But... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, Ruby's maybe they had a good reaction Ruby. tonight. Maybe they just see her as a utility baby face. Probably. Yeah. Maybe that's what she is. Maybe. Who's above her on your depth chart, personally, babyface side? Personally, yeah. um, on the babyface side, yeah. So like we're Rosa. booking the territory. Rose is above her. For me personally, I don't. Chris is not above her yet. She will be. Yeah, because Ruby's she can give you promo, right? I love yeah. Chris, but they got to find that yet. I just don't have the like I. I'm not sliding her in any way. I'm not. I actually like Chris, but I don't. The outrage when she lost to Ruby stunned me personally. Just yeah, my personal take on it. Um, I think there's a world in which they unlock Chris Statlander, the person, and she is like mega business. Yeah, I agree. But right now, they have not figured that out yet. <laughs> That's not a slight on her. There, it's just this way it works. You have to. I just have Ruby's, more of a connection you know, with Ruby. That is just Sheeta. I'd put Sheeta above her. Um, I love. Yeah, Shida. I wouldn't, but I yeah. Sheeta's a better worker. But I just Ruby is a promo. But I get that. Yeah, that's close. Riho's Reho, close for me. Riho's yeah. close. Uh, that's kind of back and forth. Um, yeah, and Tony's right there too. Yeah, Tony's yeah, okay. got some death, man. They just got a Tony's. I like Tony more I than think. you. I think. Did you see the thing happen tonight where she like forgot to charge Jamie? <laughs> no, I didn't even notice it, honestly. This is really funny. It's no big deal, but like go back and watch it because it's quite funny. So Ruby got in in front of Tony because the bit was going to be that she was going to charge the heels and Ruby was going to hold her back, but Jamie uh-huh. and Tony didn't charge. So Ruby just sort of stood there doing this like tackle thing and then she, I guess Tony figured it out and they did it. But she's just – Tony is – and this happens a lot with, with wrestling, I think. She has to find the balance between cool and being like kind of standoffish and like 
seeming uninterested. Now, yeah. now to, be, to be very clear, I know she's not uninterested. She's working really hard in the matches. I'm, clear. I'm not saying she's uninterested. What I'm saying is she needs to find a way of projecting fire and, like, energy without losing her cool factor. It's right. Hard. Yeah. But you, and you get what I mean, right? Like she's I get of, it, yeah. Yeah. She, she's like, whereas Ruby's, funny, nothing else she's committed. She's all energy and all performance. Um, I thought, like, we've, I'm sure we've talked about this already, but, like, I thought Ruby was very shaky when she got to AEW. I agree. A lot of ring rust, I'm sure, was a lot of it. Um, sometime after she lost to Britt, um, and she kind of went and did indies. Um, she's clearly refound like her confidence and like her matches on YouTube are genuinely very good. Um, obviously, they don't get enough time to be like blow away matches or anything. She does have, she's always gonna, have, she has that issue where she just, the way she runs. Yeah, she's not a dynamic athlete. Yeah. She's, because of some of her physical limitations, she is always going to be a wrestler that without good matchmaking will not give you like right. great matches. There's yeah. a lot of wrestlers like that, and I'm wrong with it. So like if you give her Chris, who is like an explosive yeah. athlete, she's fine. She can bump and she can sell and she's over. You give her someone like Brit who has similar limitations, you get a match often that I think really lacks kind of you know dynamism. It's kind of flat, right? Everything looks kind of dull and, and unmoving. So yeah, I think that's kind of the. I mean, that's where Athena. I didn't know this was happening. That's cool. Yes, I haven't so. seen her before, but I know who she is. Yeah, I can't. I'm trying to think of there, there was. A, I think there was a couple jokes she talent on the tapings. I want to say, um, cool. Athena is a big help in that regard in terms of women that are like explosive. Yes, Athena takes like big bumps and like can really, and I think that's important, man. Like, look, this be real, and it's not. It's not a slight. There's a lot of high octane explosive action in AEW. Like, mm -hmm. it is what it is. Like, when you look at, you know, the fucking Death Triangle House of Black match, it's like, that's that's a lot of high execution for the middle of the card. <laughs> so, having some more of that in the women's division will help. Um, yeah, we talked about this earlier. This was hilarious. I want to see a full video of it because it literally looked like King was like, existing in a middle ground between being completely on his face and being. It looked like a cartoon. Right? It was fucking hilarious. And yeah. weirdly, it fit him. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> he, he wouldn't try and look cool. He's got to try and see, you know, he's got to try and save his guy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was. Uh, and I want to I wanna circle back in a minute. So I want to just check if there's anything else we forgot before we do this. But. Um, oh, yeah, quickly. So this Jericho Appreciation Society gimmick. Is Chris Jericho the greatest ever in terms of like. Utilizing factions is like each guy having their role. How Maybe, yeah. is it the way that he and they've always been different to be clear? But Chris is like you can see how the way the segments are formatted. Angelo has like an authoritative kind of matter of fact way of delivering his promos, right? And he always leads the segment. Like he'll be like the first guy and he'll kind of set the stage. It's steady. And then Menard is obviously a fucking firecracker. That dude's out of his mind. So then, like, he, he'll he find, like, the perfect spot for everyone. Hager is the best example. You and I talk about it all the time. Hager really ain't any good, but he's very seldom overexposed in that promotion. They yep. make the most of him. Because, and I think Jericho is a massive part of that. I really do. I think he knows that his limitations, strengths, weaknesses. How often does Hager talk? Right? Like, Oh, yeah, they ever talk, yeah. You look at what he's doing with Garcia. Like, he's so good at that, man. So good. This faction's a better fit for him than in a circle. I, I Crosby, agree. Yeah. Crosby weren't, he didn't, uh, he weren't sure. It's definitely better, man. We pitched 2.0 months ago for a reason. It was, it works, you know. It really does. Um, what was I going to say? Got a lot of things here. Anything on the appreciation side? I know I rambled the issue. Anything on that front? I mean, they're just really good. Um, yeah. Jericho. Is back as we say every time. Um, yeah, he's really his post his post show scrum interview was actually fascinating. I need to watch it. Yeah, um, his was clear, easily the best one. 
he's also interesting because he's not in character at all. Like he's he's literally going there like it's a press conference and he's a performer and he's just frankly talk about that's the way it should be done. I'm sorry. Yeah. I if I was a wrestler and I was 30 and I was doing it in character, I'd watch Chris Jericho. What the fuck am I doing? I mean, he's clearly figured it out. You know, <laughs> yeah. like this is where it's, Chris has always been ahead of the curve on that stuff, man. You remember when he did, him and Kenny had the big match, they did a podcast like explaining the process. People were like, well, hold on. It's like, this is where we need to move, brothers. Yeah. This is where we got to move. He, if yeah, he's it's not out, on the TV show, it's, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's oh. just. I've always believed that. Like, did you see? Um, I was talking about this earlier. Did you see the clip of Brian training Jade and Red? Yeah. I explained this earlier, but like, it's a simple thing, but just pop me. You know the deal where he drops the knee on the arm and Jade goes, "I don't trust myself." Yeah. And then they take a close up, and you see that Brian's like this close to the action. That is the art form of wrestling that we need to try and shine a more of a light on, rather than like, you know, these are actually real tough guys. It's MMA, actually. <laughs> like, right. That's what wrestling really is, man. <clears throat> like, these dudes are – some of these dudes are special. Brian Danielson's a fucking wizard out there. Yeah, okay, well, be right careful. There. You're going to get sued. My bad. But, um, but, yeah, I'm glad he did that. Uh, what was I going to say? But anyway, That's, yeah, the, my point was going to be that, like, the Blackpool – like, Danielson and Moxley were, were the what you called out in the beginning. They were the plan all along. Yeah, that's why they never really had anything there for a little bit because they were just wait, they were holding him back and waiting for this. Um, it's very interesting. Like that's... Jericho clearly books his own stuff because you could tell from the way he was talking about it that like yeah. But yeah, you realize him plan for quite a while. Him and King first interacted in November 2021. Yeah, he did say though we were right. He did say that originally the plan was for him and Kingston to, they were actually just going to shake hands and become a tag team. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was the original plan. Do you think he, like, I know that he knew King was over and he loves Eddie, but, like, do you think he fully got it until they, like, had to choose between them? I must have, you know, this is where Chris is admirable because he adjusted, but I do think it probably was, like, a slightly eye-opening of, like, oh, my God, he's Yeah, that probably. Um... The the thing is, there's a great there's a couple of moments where you can actually see it. There's remember when King came back after his injury and he got that massive pop mm -hmm. before Jericho wrestled Santana and Ortiz with Hager. If you watch that segment back, like Jericho's smiling, and he's kind of framing it as like, "Oh, this fucker's back," but it's absolutely him popping huge at the fact that he's realised this is where they're going to go. Like, because the weeks after that, he does the sports entertainment line because that's all impromptu. He says yeah. Paulson's Aaron the place boot. He's like, this is Yeah, that's what he said. Yes. Yeah. Um it's yeah, it's fabulous. I mean, he's we talk about it a lot. Like there's a lot of reasons dislikes Chris Jericho, but he's one of the more unique singular performers in wrestling ever. He's so adaptable and versatile. An absolute, you know, jack of all trades. You could argue he's a master of all at times, honestly, but yeah, special. I forgot he did say that. It was gonna be him, Moxley, and Kingston. Pop. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? I don't know if you pitched that to Mox, do you? No. <laughs> God, when Mox got on the mic tonight, he's like, God, Eddie, you're a fucking pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's basically what he said. Um, I agree with this totally. Meek says Regal release was the biggest mistake. I say it to you all the time. I, I never in my life thought I would see him work for another company. Yeah. I thought he'd be fed to the grave, frankly, as grim as that sounds. I really, I mean, seeing him out there with Eddie is like surreal. It's weird, totally. Um, yeah. Now, I'm. I wanted. There's one other thing. We did Athena. We talked about Wardlow. He's pretty over. Have you heard about Wardlow? Yeah. I got really worried for a second that they just weren't going to have him have music. Like they were just going to stick with this. <laughs> it's like... I, kind, I kind of prefer that to just playing the theme. I, I can't give me new music. You know. I know. I was hoping they did the the War Pigs thing that everyone wanted. That would have been cool. Do you not think it would have kind of ruled if he had no music and the, the announcers were like, "This is it, man. He needs the crowd. That's yeah. his anthem. You know, he's unbeatable with the crowd. He's not. He, he no one's even like challenged him about it. About his music. I don't know. It never popped me. Um, uh, they did the smart mark thing we referenced. By the way, Scorpio's promo tonight. Wasn't that something? Yeah, very good. Don Ari had a line, and he's you know he's finding his way. But Scorpio came across like a big time star. And I thought um, I love that. 
Um, match should be good. Really good. Yeah. That's that's the kind of matchmaking I want Scorp to get in this go of it, you know? I mean, I wish he was a baby face. I've said this a million and one times. Um, but if he's going to be a heel, just give him some of these baby faces that you can have electric matches. With. Frankie Kazarian is a hell of a pro. He ain't, you know, spectacular in this way. Um, but uh, the, just to quickly circle back to the main event before we take this thing home. That was... There was something different about that match tonight. Shoot, am I imagining it? No, I don't think so. There was something... I don't want to say un-AEW, because I don't think anything is un-AEW. It's a variety show. But, like, it felt like it was kind of in a time... Like, from a time machine. It was so visceral, you know? Yeah. It was like a... It's kind like of how ter- Moxley works now, man. He's he's so special. Yeah. And I we did not you, feel this way about him as a worker when we started doing these shows. No, we didn't. But I did say, and I, I remember talking to you, I, you know, I was all talking about this back then. The one thing I do for the mocks that he's proved in AEW, he's the kind of top guy that would have been a top guy at any time. Yeah. I think he's proven that. Now, the work being at this level is like, that makes him really top tier. Because if you put his, if you take this version and we see him right now, by the way, he looks amazing, which is fucking awesome. Good for yeah. him. But you look at how consistent his matches have been, how great a promo he is, the entrance, the presentation, the charisma, the variety of matches he's having. Because as much as he has his style, like look at the different guys he works in. Gossie is totally different to you, right? And um, I don't know, man. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to do like some all timer shit, but like he's. He's one of the guys. He's in that that kind of collection of like U.S. top guys. You know? Oh yeah, he's there. Certainly in the, the top tier of his generation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, what would you say? His generation is like the one that follows the Danielsons. And yeah, stuff, he's right? not in the Danielsons. Yeah, Danielson. He's like he's... late two thousands came in and Rollins. Right? Um, who else is in that group? It's the Shield guys and like. Yeah, and even Roman's kind of like. I mean, yes, but at the same time, he's kind of later. It's different, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a, like, in terms of, like, you, because Kenny's absolutely in it, but you, for whatever reason, you think of Kenny differently because he's so, like, so much of his prime was as a, like, a top guy in Japan. That makes, right. In the, in the same way, to explain that, in the same way that you would, like, right or wrong, I think of Stan Hansen in a different bracket to, like, a lot of his contemporaries. Um but yeah, Kenny's obviously in that era. I just, I'm trying to think of guys we're forgetting. Like top guys that kind of became top guys in the last decade. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Not many of them exist, I guess. I don't know. I guess the older guys just carried through for a lot of it. Um, it's weird because even like Mock, I mean, Kenny started five years earlier than Moxley did. Even though the, yeah. Mox is only two years younger than him. And Kenny was like in developmental really early, and he had yeah. a weird career. Kenny, yeah, um, yeah, certainly. I think you know I, AJ's I, in Danielson era. AJ was around before. Yeah, yeah. AJ was a big deal, man. Like when he was bouncing from Ring of Honor to TNA, he was like one of the fucking the hot guys in in the indie scene. Like he's matched with Paul London. By the way, did you see Paul London's become one of the There's No Psychology guys? That fucking rules. Did you see that? No, I didn't know He did that. a podcast oh, and was like, I can't watch AEW, man. No one sells. Wrestling, man. Amazing cycle that we do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's just interesting. Like, now we talk about it. That kind of is a weird... Cody's one of them. Cody's actually one of them. <laughs> Hilarious yeah. as it sounds. Co- we are, this is we'll end, we'll end with this. But Cole Wumps guy said to you, this WWE one will be interesting because you'll see if he's a real top guy. He's actually a top guy, Code Man. I'm very good, like good for he's him. He's a lot. He's a much better fit there than guys they've been pushing for years. Right. Maybe even guys he's feuding directly with. He's he's a real <laughs> top guy. Good for him. Um, but uh, but yeah, this was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Should we back to haven't done this time, in a while. Brother? Yeah, it's fun, man. Like, I think sometimes we both struggle with. I mean, I was talking about it just like yesterday. Um, we struggle sometimes with the negative that doing these shows can have on our enjoyment of the product. Yeah. You can definitely struggle with like over analysis, but I do think you and I 
and the chat and us as kind of community, we try to keep some perspective on, hey guys, let's keep in mind that like, this is probably going to be a time in wrestling people look back on really fondly one day, you know? And I know that sounds kind of tragic in its own way because it's suggesting it's going to end, but like, look at this roster, man. Look at like how fun, like, there's like a big story every other week. And, and a lot of them are just intriguing, exciting and interesting. We went a long time without any of these stories. Oh the yeah, MGF, a long, long really, time. Bro, even the MGF thing, was that not one of them? Like that was some old school shit. We'd lost those, you know? Dude yep. was <laughs> just fucking not going to show. It's like, feel how you feel about it, but as someone that covers it, it's nice to have some energy in, among the game again. And uh, yeah, this was a hell of a show. Shoot, any final thoughts, comments on uh, Dynamite? Or yeah, this was fun. And like we, you said immediately when we started, like Twitch kind of makes it even easier for us to do this. Now, that doesn't mean that this is going to be like a regular thing. Right. But in a lot of ways, our impromptu stuff is our best stuff. Um, the grin is a, the, the grin proper, as I've decided I'd just start calling it. Um, is you know, I almost always look forward to that. The Tuesday show, sometimes I'm like, mm, you know, <laughs> and then it ends up being fun all the time. But, yeah. you know, schedules and I don't do well with schedules. Bobby tweeted a thing about like how he he has this thing where he, he plans stuff and then he gets close to it and he doesn't want to do it anymore. That's exactly how I am. Um, he said he's starting to get over with over it, which good for him because I've never gotten over it. Um, no, I think we were with that. <laughs> yeah. Like. They're uh, like this Moxley speedball match I keep talking about. I will wake up on that Saturday morning and be like, mm, do we really need to go to this? We can just stay home. And well, of course yeah. we'll go. But... Yeah, it's long, yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean, actually. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's very grinner of us. We all feel that way. I bet Jay Shell doesn't have that. I think a lot of people feel that way. Chat, tell us we're not nuts. Unless we are nuts, in which case, please explain. Um, He's introverted. I'm, yeah. It's kind of funny like, is that we both describe ourselves that way, but we're like doing a podcast with 70 people watching right now. Yeah, but if we did it live with like a crowd, chats are one that, but I, bro, I don't know, man. There's a chance, you know, it could go, it could go either way, honestly. I would, one of I'd us be, would have to like proper guide the energy, right? Yeah, have to. Like, if we was on a stage and our recall started like talking about. Lord Stephen Regal matches and like it got quietly, you know, uncomfortably quiet. We'd one of us would have to, we'd have to resurrect it. We'd have to. Yeah. It would yeah, probably happen one day. The chat's right. Jay Shell's totally different than us. Yeah, I mean the rest she's of she's younger than all of us, like, and she's already accomplished more than all. Of us. <laughs> the rest of White thing is like I, I've done so many ideas like that. not like that specifically, but. but um, so many like big picture ideas, and I just never follow through like that. And she's done it seventeen. So yeah. I looked at her like uh, thing she tweeted that like is her resume type gimmick. Pop. Number one, it popped me huge that she's got the late night grin on there. Um, Pop. God bless. But she also like organized the largest protest in the history of her state. Like, good lord, man, she's seventeen years old. Oh, no, I haven't great. done shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's crazy, man. Um, yeah, I'm now, I'm now pondering this live show because I'm an ego maniac. Of course, you are. You know what we could do for a shoot? You know, when I'm in Philadelphia and New York City, yeah, if full gear is on that weekend, that could be a scene. Do you understand that that's like 10 hours away from me? Do you want to be a star or not, brother? Not really, no. Could you imagine us buying like 30 tickets for the cinema and the whole cinema is just like four fucking losers that actually like wrestling and the rest of them is us? Oh, God. Could you imagine that? Imagine like Julia Hart coming on the screen and like we all just pop huge because that's like one of our bits. And and Bud Mack comes out and like Australian flags go up. Yeah. <clears throat> There's genuinely more people in the chat that will be down for this. This could, like, I know for your perspective, it's a long but Even if it's just me, this sounds fun. Hopefully, Full Gear does fall on that weekend. I forget what weekend it is now, but <laughs> it's the second, I don't think second we weekend know of November. Yet. Yeah, oh, second, you're going to be here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. I genuinely think it could be a lot of fun. Like, because that's the, this be in all seriousness, that is absolutely the kind of setting that we would prefer than doing an actual show. Like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would love to watch wrestling with you guys while I'm doing a show. <laughs> That's my. Uh, that's still one of my favorite bits. It was like when we were gonna we were gonna go to full gear last year, yeah. and I was like, "So how would we do a live show?" And you're just like, "I don't know, man." Like, <laughs> <laughs> like how would we do a show if we're all in the same room? Like, <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, people would like joke about. It, by the way, uh, S Galoy subscribed. Sam, I'm pretty sure, and um, Limborn followed. We appreciate. It. We're at 199 followers. Good lord, man. 199. Um, People were joking about, like, I was on Twitch for Fightful for all that time, and I have no idea how Twitch works. It's like, guys, what do you think? I was, like, paying attention to that stuff. I was, like, trying to, you know, I was just doing the rest and talk. I don't fuck about all these hype train stuff. I don't know. <laughs> it's whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Um, look at this. Look at this. If it was only a drive, three hours, I would fly out. God bless, man. This is so like, in, in all seriousness, I intend to be at Double or Nothing next year. There will be at some point something where the Grinners will collectively be around, I think. I don't know if we'll all be there as us five, but, like, you know, where where you guys and – the big thing for me is is like I don't want it to be, like, formal when I'm weird because I'm literally just, like, a guy. Like, I'm going to be so impressive in that setting, you know? Yeah. So, like, watching wrestling feels like the best fit, really. I'm definitely going to make – Double or Nothing is eventually going to become an annual thing for me and Adrian. I just don't yeah. know what year that's going to start Yeah. financially. But at some point, that's going to become an annual trip. Assuming they keep doing it in Vegas every year, that mm -hmm. will be a yeah. annual trip for us. Because that just that's a perfect trip, man. Like it's spaced out. You know, Wednesday through Sunday. You don't have wrestling every single day. Go do some other stuff. Yeah. Um, Get a picture with Bob Matt. Yeah, exactly. Um, complain <sighs> about how hot it is. Grinner's pilgrimage to dark taping seems like destiny. Just you imagine that bored vlog, out of our minds. The vlog content of asking like a like our pursuit of that taping, you know, like we oh, us shout outside yeah. and could make like a cannonball run video where it's like all of us traveling to the <laughs> <laughs> I had great I used to I think I've tweeted about this. I used to have the idea that, that should be a WWE film as like a cannonball run where they all they all like pair up and they're traveling to WrestleMania. Oh, that would rule. Yeah, I don't know. I can't believe they haven't done that. So now AEW should do that. Yeah, Somebody agreed. DM Tony Khan um, and suggest that. Pop. An AEW film. Motion picture. Yeah. God, it, it actually might pop him given the random shit he likes to talk about out of nowhere. They do need some shitty movies, actually. That's a good call. Yeah. Wrestling needs shitty movies. It's an important part of our history, you know? Wrestling stars making bad films and being kind of terrible in them. Rules. Oh, punk, that was a punk movie pitch, too. There you go. <sighs> there you go. CM Punk, confirmed shoot. Um, it's entirely possible that I got that idea from him in retrospect and just don't remember that. But I'm, I'm just say that. Yeah. Double down. Okay, it was my idea. He stole it um, from me before he blocked yeah. me. That piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, there will be no episode of the Burt now because we've done an hour and a half review of Dynamite. We're going to post this. She and I had the exact same idea. We're going to post this at the Burt time on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube or how, um, it's a new month. If you've never been a Grinner, officially, latenightgrin.com, $1 gets you in. There are no tears, just grins. Um, <laughs> isn't that great? No. Yeah. I shouldn't be doing shows tomorrow anyway because it's it's the first day of the Jubilee holidays. There you go. People are going to be in the streets eating sandwiches and stuff together, you know. We're going to be doing the late night grin during the Jubilee, huh? Terrible. Yeah, it's disrespectful. It is. Should I come on with you? Oh, I've got some visual bits planned for the for certain go. shows. We should have a... Not this Friday, though, I don't think. What is it? God Save the Queen? <laughs> We should make Bobby sing that. He still owes us a song. He actually does, yeah. Yeah, this is like this is really exciting, right? Like people just putting tables outside and just eating sandwiches together. That's a real thing. Yeah, like the streets, like I don't know if this one will be, but like there's streets that are just one table in the middle of the road and they're like sectioned off and people go out and like sit and eat sandwiches and cakes and stuff together and just talk about like royalty, I guess. I don't know. I've never done one. I don't know what to do. 
There's not even a ball game on or anything, you know? That's incredible. Just like a holiday where you eat sandwiches? Well, like, people are doing, like, picnics, you know? And there's, like, a there's like these, like, different campaigns about it. Like, there's one that's called... Can you just, like, walk around town and, and eat sandwiches? Mm, not necessarily. It's more like a community thing, like your street. Um, um. There's, like, a non-famous but kind of famous actor who has a campaign this year called Knock, Name, and Natter. Is it Hugh Grant? No. In which He's a Fulham Hugh... supporter. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Okay. He's encouraging people to knock on their neighbors' doors to talk about royals. But you should have a name tag so they know your name because apparently you can't just introduce yourself nowadays. But then you're supposed to natter, which means you talk about the queen. Okay. And you can make picnics. And uh... I can't relate to this because knocking on random people's doors in this country will get oh. you killed. <laughs> you said it like I can relate, so I'm gonna ever do that. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I mean, the sandwiches part is pretty cool, but it feels like it should at least be like a ball game on a Saint for us to enjoy it, you know? Yeah, England are playing. They're they're playing New Zealand in the cricket, you know. So a cool experience about having a dog and living in America is like a random person will knock on your door and your dog will like bark and you've got to yell at him to shut the fuck up, but like quietly so they don't hear you. <laughs> yeah, That's like an ongoing struggle with me and, and Zeke. It's like someone knocks on the door and he freaks out and I'm like, don't shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to hear us. As if I'm obligated to answer the door. Yeah. And then I'll go, like I like to go to the door and stand and stare at him through the peephole. <laughs> until they leave and I'll sit there and I'll, I'll look at the dog like, <laughs> so this is 100% and see I work from home so this happened not regularly but dude that thing you tweeted about the landline is one of the funniest things I've ever read I used, that, that was a shoot I used to do that yeah <laughs> I would uh my dad would have his cell phone right next to him on the table next to the couch, and I'd call the landline, and he'd answer it and be all pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> that is so unnecessary, man. I at least, I think I only did it once, but I vividly remember I called him at halftime of an Ohio State game. I called the landline, and we talked for a second. I was like. I got a bad reception. I'll call you back. Oh. And I hung up and called his cell phone. <laughs> By the way, speaking of things that pop me, I swear to you, I was exhausted. I, the reason I'm energetic on this show is I crashed out again last night after the burp. And I was like, you know when you're in that state of tiredness where you're kind of delirious? That Boss Moz tweet about Dave, yeah. I actually cried. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you I'm going to read this because this is that incredible to me um, Dave Meltzer who is him being on Twitter is like the ultimate blessing a in a curse yeah like it's objectively kind of bad in some ways for his rep but enough people get it that it rules because it's like the, it gives you the strangest grins ever yeah he quote tweeted the NBA rating which was like 10 million for Sunday and said Check out this number. Already that rules, right? Mm -hmm. Check out this number. If AEW pay if you're down, and I'm not saying they are, <laughs> aka do not tweet me, Tony. <laughs> and I mention this number, and you say it's an excuse. You are someone who will likely forever drown in your stupidity. And at Boss Moz, who's not a mutual one, I just follow him because he's funny. <laughs> he quote tweeted me. <laughs> he quote tweeted me. The, the actual quote itself, you are someone who will likely forever drown in your own stupidity. And this was his analysis. Imagine drowning forever. <laughs> Usually, it ends after a certain length of time, and even worse, the liquid is your very own stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> and all because you didn't have a firm grasp on television ratings as they relate to professional wrestling events. <laughs> <sighs> it just is so amazing that like for Dave the ultimate in stupidity is that right like yeah 
Like, oh, this fucking idiot didn't even consider the pay-per-view buy rates fixed by the NBA ratings. <laughs> he's, when he talks about Mike today, and he's like, he goes, you know, Mike today, and I would talk about you can't, you can't get you can't get out of touch. You have to you can't you can't let it pass you by. He's like, you sound so scared of being like yeah. an old man. Imagine Mike today having these conversations with Dave. What an amazing fool. <laughs> just ringing him up and being like, do you think um you know, do you think this GCW thing's any good? And Mike's like, no, but we can't fucking say that, right? <laughs> Actually, in all fairness, Dave. Dave certainly said it, didn't he? Do you remember that review? Oh my god. No. Remember that they did the Hammerstein show and he reviewed it and he fucking Oh, that's right, it. yeah. You said they were all bad wrestlers. It was like it was a wild scene. Fair. Bless his heart. Some of it was even excessive, like the Jeff Jarrett match, he just decided he hated because it popped him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. He's quite the character. Bless him. He's a legend. Um, all right. Let's, uh, let's take him home. We've been on for an hour and 40. We really do hope you've enjoyed this. Um, it is now 5 a.m. here, but it's... Oh, he froze. I'm going to go He's and eat sandwiches and cake. Thanks, shoot. Um, uh, what do you call it? Dynamite was good, right? I thought so. All right. Everybody no have Bert. a sandwich tomorrow? Factual. No Bert tomorrow. Um, because instead, we will be uh, eating sandwiches and cakes and such. This will be on at 3 p.m. on YouTube. The Sandwich Jubilee. Factual. Um, Is that 3 p.m. your time? Yes, yeah, sorry. 10 a.m. Eastern. Yeah. You know, everyone's up around on Brit time this week, right? Special week. Thursday night, which is tomorrow night. 6.30 East and 11.30 here in Great Britain. We're going to do Fed Dead Redemption, Bobby, myself. Um, I don't really know what's happened, but we've done, done a couple of shows for us. So hopefully there's a lot to talk about. Oh, it's Hell in the Cell preview. That'll be good. And then uh, Friday, the big episode of Retire the Rankings. We do the last two weeks. Um, late Night Grin, that's it, right? Yeah, oh, the boat so. will be back on Friday. The boat will be back on Late Night Grin on Friday, too. So, Damn. There you go. Damn? Oh, uh, yeah. What? I wanted to put British flags all at the end of this over and over yeah. again, but you can't do that on Windows, apparently. There's no yeah. British emoji, British flag emoji. Owned. Oh, well. Anyway, Rule Britannia and all that good stuff that um, uh, is the queen uh, still alive? Apparently. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of important to the celebration, really, in a lot of ways. <laughs> and I think I know that was like a thing that people were, yeah, questioning there for a minute. Bob's very he's very speculative about that. Have you noticed? Yeah, that? he's very anti um, queen and I establishment, quite frankly. Keep talking. All right, Robert O'Neill is punk rock in many ways. That's what I'm saying. Um, he and he and Corey Graves were a tag team on the Indies for a stretch. Oh, there we go. Oh no! Oh no! You can hear like the the clicking and the maneuvering going on, and there's a wry grin on Shoot's face. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's the payoff. <laughs> okay, well, fair. Um. I hope this has been fun, guys. Uh, hopefully, we'll hit the 200 follower mark unless we've done it. No, 200 followers. Hopefully, we'll hit that. Tell tomorrow. your friends to follow us, even if they don't care and never watch any of our stuff. We need Bob to promote Fed Dead, man. There's a couple of lunatics you could probably get to watch it. He's very positive about the Fed on there. Yeah. You know, Bruce Pritchard would probably watch it. Fair. He'd probably feed us information, quite frankly. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, have a good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.